day of rat rod festivities, we make our way to our cabins and campsites and prepare ourselves for tomorrow's early departure and ultimately the beginning of the 2012 Rat Rod Tour. About a quarter after five, five thirty here. Getting ready to go meet up with the caravan. Um, God dang, I'm tired. Breakfast brats, all right. Wait, say that again for the camera? That's like forget your <laughs> sack at home when you're going to a porno show. The morning greets us with fog and anticipation. Brian's going to do another wake up call here. As the group slowly assembles, Brian Daigle takes the 2012 tour rat deep into the foggy balls of the campground to rouse unsuspecting campers with the 12's open pipes yeah. and a little morning cheer. Way in there, look at that. Okay, listen for it. <laughs> what do we got going on here, Steve? What? What do we got going on here? I'm gonna eat a wiener. A wiener? That's what right. flavor is that wiener? Breakfast. Breakfast flavor. It's got some uh, specialty. Cheese, eggs, In fact, I'm not gonna Excellent. put anything on it because I want to taste it. Make it is better. What? That's what I always say. Naked. He's a hot one. A hot wiener. Inside. Get a word again. Coffee. I had coffee this morning. I'm good to go. Yep. Yeah. You see, it's such a growth, but I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell this what my mom called me, David. Yeah. David's gonna do a blessing on the tour, so we get rid of all the bad juju before we go. There you go. As we take off down old Highway 61, the sense of adventure overwhelms us. And even driving these early miles, we embrace the journey as it begins.
after a great send-off lunch with our friends in Albert Lee, we cruise into South Dakota to hang out with the Outcast Car Club before moving on into Nebraska. Mitchell, the guys from the club cook up some grub and we spend some time talking about cars, events, and just generally goofing off. Oh, he's going to the digging machine. Come on, Chad. Ride the horsey. Ride the horsey. Is that one more extended? You can get that thing. <laughs> Ride the horsey, Chad. Let's go. Monkey bars. There we go. All right. <laughs> Yeah. What's going on out here? Still waiting for my truck. We have a transfer on board. It's just been done to Mitchell. Hey, it's oh no. My truck's been washed. It hasn't rained here since May. We come here. Mo. Yeah. Three rooms. <laughs> the rat rod rain down. <laughs> oh. It's got that turbo effect. Free shower! Yeah, Back on the road again, we cross the Missouri River. A beautiful spectacle in the middle of, well, nothing. It's the first real landscape change since we left Minnesota, and the crew takes a break for photos. After a brief stop, it's right back on the road. Better taste of yesterday 
I saw haystacks for the first time in my life. First time? I've never seen haystacks in real life. Really? You don't do that again. discovered our caravan while we were off eating. He hunted us down and invited us out to a shop. Sometimes the coolest things in life are spontaneous. This was no exception. Colorado, in the foot of the Rockies. There they were on the horizon, almost daring us to go any further. We stopped at the workplace of Jeremy Renfold, son of our guide, Roger. While there, Dooley was able to repair a damaged radiator cap and the crew was able to regroup after a tense jaunt through some metro traffic put everyone on edge. The plasma vendor is William. Patrick, William, who, who, did, who did these? That guy. Me. Oh, who's that guy? Come on. Use your big boy uh, word. Come on. Charge your son. Is that why you've been having If you turn it and... Yeah, see that? You do car wheels! <laughs> I do it standing here and not even paying attention. We had a nice impromptu car show at Fatso's Diner and shook off the bad juju. <laughs> Roger's like, like father, like son! What? Tomorrow we'd trek high into the mountains, and with a little luck, we'd make it down the other side. The next morning was full of nervous excitement. The crew made last minute tweaks and prepared themselves and their machines for the climb. This was going to be the crux of the tour. Conquer these mountains and we'll have done something amazing for the entire Rat Rod community. Fail and we'd prove the naysayers right. Rat Rods were going to summit these mountains if we had to push them to the top. What? <laughs> Instead of wet too, I'm like, great, Chad's got a wet Chad? coming on. No, that was a pretty no, no, no. good wet. Ch Chad, why, what does Copper Harbor have to do with right right his hip um, and started to give my Basically, <laughs> it has to do with covering up my hairy body. <laughs> yeah. Even Nebraska's wearing a Nebraska shirt. After a quick breakfast, we were on our way. Well, yeah, um, 
We had to get lost once, right? We're lost in the mountains. Around the 10,000 foot mark, disaster. Kevin Stay's truck dumps a trail of steamy liquid, and there aren't many places to pull over. Finding enough shoulder to stop, the crew gets to work assessing the problem. After a little debate about what was causing the overheating, some new fluids were added and we were back to the climb. Reaching this big lookout point on top of the mountain was amazing. The views were breathtaking, and there were people everywhere checking out the rats. Hey Brian, video details, where are we? Well, I think we're two thirds way up the mountain. How elevation? Just get the tree line. I think we got about our 2,000 feet to go and we'll crack the gill and head down their side. We stopped here, there was a whole bus here out of English people, they just unveiled right out. But the funny thing is, I'm looking at my cell phone, I only got one car. It was all calm until Dave Novi jumped over the side to nab a couple hats that had blown off. Superhero style. Truckload of English people, like a courier, 
dirt bus. They just put Pete all over themselves and they see us. Let me check for crack first. Oh, I got a, I got your crack big time earlier. Okay. I, I got a dingleberry, I think. <laughs> Among the tourists were these French bikers who we swapped stickers and handshakes with. Moments like this are truly unforgettable. I'll get it, Brian! Thank you very much. It's a nice experience. As we left the lookout towards the summit, Cameraman Brent Bonneville decided to go daredevil on the bit and film from the T-12's back bumper. Once we hit 12,000 feet and got Brent back into the car, it was a mad dash down the other side of the mountain. When we stopped for food somewhere in the mountains, we realized we were a good four hours late and could possibly miss our next stop. Some locals shared a shortcut with us, which we foolishly took. It included miles of treacherous gravel road running out of the mountains. Tired and ragged crew arrives in Grand Junction, just in time to make our next stop at the Infinity Nightclub.
Friday morning, just out of Grand Junction, Colorado, getting ready to head out to Utah and out to Vegas this evening. Getting ready to go. Being led out by this guy. That guy is Aaron Altenberg, who would lead the group out of Grand Junction with his killer 42 Chevy. After conquering the mountains, the group began to relax. Dave is making a mockery of his rat body. Stop cleaning! Don't clean it! Don't glass, yeah? He's gonna make a good wife someday. day of driving through Utah and eventually into Las Vegas. temperature was climbing. We survived the mountains, but now we had to survive triple-digit heat and a lot of miles. Novi, how'd this guy find us here at the gas station? Somebody called him. Said what? That's his bunch of old rat rods down there. We had to take check it out. Sweet. Along the stretch of Utah Highway, our New Mexican friends Charlie and Elmo Pacheco and their families miraculously caught up to our caravan. They had been waiting for us in the north, but missed us when we rushed through trying to make up time. <laughs> it was definitely one of the feel-good moments. Hey, Patrick, what happened? <laughs> what happened? That's what a quarter-fed white boy happens when you get down to the desert, man. <laughs> <laughs> Steering wheel, driving. Oh, wow. Somebody, somebody slap it! Oh. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't hurt. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Chad, yeah. yeah. you want to burn over here yet? No. Nope. Okay, because the sun was coming in the window. Yeah, your ear looks a little red.
We rolled into Las Vegas a little behind schedule, but we arrived to a great crowd and zipped over to Molly Malone's for a late dinner. The next morning we set up at the beautiful village at Lake Las Vegas for our first Rat Palooza car show. And I'm falling to the wicked realms of time And I'm calling the memories and the past And I'm breathing the air of a noun every day Cars from all over the country line the cobblestone streets. So many in fact that we reached capacity within a couple hours. All right, you're a Vegas native, and you just put a beanie on. Yeah. What's yeah. the temperature right now? About 103 right now. Still around that. Awesome. Despite the triple-digit heat, Rapalooza is awesome. Before we knew it, the show was over. would be at the home of iconic Rat Rod builder Steve Darnell, a home that could easily double as a movie set.
We were joined by rat routers from all over the place. No politics, no BS, just a bunch of easygoing people talking about their rides and having a good time. All in this amazing setting. Steve's personality and creativity was visible everywhere. The next morning, our crew visited the Mountain Spring Saloon for a recovery brunch. And now, a moment with Patrick Wilson. Words of wisdom today? Words of wisdom. Don't throw toothpicks in urinals, crabs pole vault. Was it Novi? Big freaking intake valve, <laughs> exhaust valve. Looks like Steve Darnell's been here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something. We'd spend a day sightseeing and milling about Vegas and the surrounding communities. After our day of running around, part of the group headed to the Hoover Dam. From the dam, it was straight towards iconic Route 66, where we'd roll through the mountains and into Laughlin for the night. the sunset, trying to reach Oatman before light faded, but to no avail. Herman Brian Dago led the group back along Route 66 and into Oldman, this time in the light. From there, a few stops along the way marked a long trek back to Minnesota. While this adventure was coming to an end, 
The plans for our next adventure were already being formed. Rolling across this great country in our machines are pieces of living history. That, my friends, is where the soul meets the road.